185 pounds on January 1st when he begins a diet. On January 31st, the same man weighs 170 pounds. Can you conclude that at some time during January, the man weighed exactly 175 pounds? Is it possible that he weighed 175 pounds on several different occasions? Can the same be said about any weight between 185 and 170 pounds? Even if you've never been on a diet, you probably realize that the answer to all three questions is yes. Weight change is a continuous process. Your weight can't drop from 185 pounds to 170 pounds without hitting every point in between at least once. The diet problem is an example of an important theorem concerning continuous functions on closed intervals. It's called the intermediate value theorem. If f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and k is any number between f of a and f of b, then there is at least one number, c, in the closed interval from a to b, such that f of c equals k. The intermediate value theorem can be used to show that a continuous function on a closed interval has a zero in the interval. For example, we'll show that the polynomial function f of x equals x to the fourth plus 5x cubed minus 1 has a zero in the closed interval from 0 to 1. We evaluate the function at the endpoints of the interval. We find that f of 0 equals negative 1 and f of 1 equals 5. The intermediate value theorem guarantees that f assumes every value between negative 1 and 5 at some point in the interval from 0 to 1. In particular, f of c equals 0 for some c in the interval from 0 to 1. Our final topic for today is infinite limits. Earlier in the lesson, we examined the function f equals 1 over x squared. We concluded that the function increases without bound as x approaches 0 from the left and from the right. And we therefore stated that the limit of f as x approaches 0 does not exist. Now you'll learn that it is also correct to write the limit of f as x approaches 0 is infinity. And we say that f has an infinite limit as x approaches 0. At first, this may seem like a contradiction. If the limit doesn't exist, how can the limit be infinity? But remember, a limit must be a number, and infinity is not a number. So when you write infinity as the limit, you haven't found a number that the function approaches. You're only indicating that the function has unbounded behavior. Now look at f of x equals negative 1 over x squared. The limit of f as x approaches 0 does not exist since the function decreases without bound. To describe this behavior, we can also say that the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 is negative infinity. Since infinite limits are different than the limits we studied earlier, we'll need a different definition than the epsilon delta definition that applies to finite limits. Essentially, the definition says that f becomes arbitrarily large as x approaches c. So for any fixed number, which we'll call m, f has to become larger than m when x is close enough to c. As before, we use delta to indicate the distance between x and c. We have the following definition of infinite limits. The statement, limit of f as x approaches c is infinity, means that for each m greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0, such that f of x is greater than m whenever the absolute value of x minus c lies between 0 and delta. Similarly, the statement, limit as x approaches c of f of x is negative infinity means that for each n less than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0, such that f of x is less than n whenever the absolute value of x minus c is between 0 and delta. We'll examine one more function with an infinite limit. Then we'll make some general